Howdy everyone. When I say socialism, you might have a few thoughts about the word, a few gut reactions. And if you're here from the previous part where I asked you to put many characterizations of socialism that you had on the back burner, then this is where they'll be mostly addressed. Sorry for making you wait a couple of weeks for that. Anyway, these preconceived notions are often ingrained pretty hard into us and have been for a lot of decades and even across multiple centuries, which makes talking about these ideas a lot harder than it should be within the rounds of civil conversation. But just to be rational and cool people here, we can try and talk about these things rationally and engage within the marketplace of ideas freely without being triggered or trying to silence or cancel one another. So without further ado, misconception one. It's failed every time it was tried. So when people say this, they often talk about places like the Soviet Union, Venezuela, Cuba, China, both modern day and the 20th century. And apart from the fact that none of these countries were actually socialist by any stretch of the word, real socialism hasn't been tried as an actual economic system anywhere in the world. And I know you're going to say something like, ha ha, he said it, he said the thing, as if preempting my argument is an argument in and of itself. They're about as socialist as North Korea is democratic or the Nazis were a German workers party. There are other places, like pre-1990s Yugoslavia, modern-day Bolivia and Vietnam, as well as Nordic countries like Denmark and Finland, which have systems a lot closer to what socialism is and what it entails, and how it would look like in a modern world, than the USSR or modern-day China, which is just totalitarian state capitalism. And coincidentally, these countries are either first world countries that are better in terms of education, overall happiness, and economic prosperity, or they're second or third world countries which are drastically improving quality of life at unrivaled rates in history, which is coincidentally a similar answer to misconception too. Socialism is totalitarianism and starvation. Now that we've done a cheap two in one, we can go on to address misconception three. Socialism has killed 20, 30, 50, 65, 100 million people. There are various figures given to this assertion, but the most popular figures touted are around 20 million in Stalin's USSR and 65 million in Mao's China, as well as a few other places in the world, which adds up to somewhere approximating 100 million deaths, after the first 10 million who's counting, I guess. And apart from the fact that none of these were actually communism, let alone socialism by any means of the word, please see above. The numbers are not inflated, these people did die under these regimes. And while Stalin and Mao were both brutal dictators, who did a bunch of real bad no-no stuff, the Holomador, hundreds of thousands of executions of landlords and counter-revolutionaries, as well as the Great Leap Forward, which led to millions of deaths. A lot of the deaths attributed to these dictators are caused by a lot of complicated esoteric stuff, like economic crises, bureaucratic nightmares, trade embargoes, non-government induced famines as well as the government induced ones, and a lot of things I don't have the time to go into, which A had nothing to do with the supposed communistness of the countries. The writer of the Black Book of Communism, which this hundred million figure is from, seemed to be very insistent upon attributing any death they could find to being caused by communist regimes and B also happened in capitalist societies, so much so that if you make comparisons between the types of death attributable to the economic system they happened under, then the numbers look a lot worse for capitalism. In colonial India between 1765 and 1938, the number of preventable deaths, not just any deaths at all, but those which were explicitly preventable, attributable to the capitalist government, were calculated at around 1.8 billion, which is not a good look to say the least. You can also put in the death toll figures of the African slave trade, which was a very capitalist move and marked the start of the imperial mercantile capitalist era and continued throughout the free market capitalism era up until the 1860s or so. You also have global poverty, malnutrition, and death due to preventable diseases, which equals around 10 million a year, as well as death tolls of wars for Middle Eastern oil done by NATO governments, as well as first world governmental intervention in Guatemala, Nicaragua, Bolivia, Venezuela, Cuba, Vietnam, Yugoslavia, Australia, Misconception Argentina. 4. Socialism and communism are utopian fantasies that will never come true. Apart from the fact that so was free market capitalism until guillotine time, what's wrong with wanting things to be better? Like, seriously, what's wrong with wanting to make things better? Also, it's very interesting that the people who say communism is a utopian pipe dream also say that it's an evil totalitarian dystopia. Hmm, that's weird. I'm sure there's nothing to that. Anyway, misconception five. Greed and profit is human nature. 
and it's the classic defense of capitalism. And this one is honestly the hardest to debunk because really it's not that bad of an argument. Just joking, it really is. Firstly, human nature is a very vague phrasing. Do you mean that humans are naturally greedy? Because uh, that's not true. Humans are getting more progressive and more charitable than ever. And that just happens to coincide with an increase in total human freedom. Weird how that works out. Do you mean that profit is inherent to us? Like we're just born and then we want every societal transaction we're involved in from age one onwards to be financially advantageous because that's <laughs> preposterous? Also, over the past 100,000 years or so, humans as a species became progressively more collectivist, looking after the whole tribe rather than individuals. I'm simplifying hundreds of thousands of years of human history, but that's the basic gist of it. Is that not human nature? The only time being an individual and not caring about everyone else in society became relevant was where adults would tell you, you have to fend for yourself out there. Like being a kid growing up in school and watching TV, I was taught about being selfless, being nice to my friends and sharing, you know, things that were against my so-called human nature. And I still hold these ideals to heart when I can without feeling some sort of innate calling or whatever towards being greedy. Not to virtue signal or anything, but I'm not really feeling that so-called human nature. But for the sake of argument, sure. Let's say, hypothetically, we did exist in this very hypothetical world where greed is human nature. What does human nature have to do with anything? Like, it's human nature to want to shit in the woods and wipe our ass with leaves. But we, and by we, I mean Mesopotamian cultures, still invented plumbing because it was cleaner and improved everyone's lives materially for the better. Same with clothes. For millennia, it was human nature to not wear clothes, but then everyone decided that hypothermia wasn't great. Human nature, whatever that means, is not the be-all end-all to what's morally just, 